Walkerweight champion Lloyd Hunnigan defends his title against top-rated contender Maurice Blocker after this commercial and a word from our local state. A different sort. I'm Al Michaels, and welcome to the WBC IBF Welterweight Championship of the World featuring two undefeated fighters. Lloyd Hunnigan, now beginning to be thought of by many as one of the best in the world pound for pound, a man who shocked Donald Curry, stopping Curry after the sixth round in their meeting in Atlantic City last September. And a man who successfully defended his title here in London on February the 22nd with a second round knockout over Johnny Bumpus, taking on Maurice, the thin man, Blocker, who is also undefeated. Blocker, ranked number one by the WBC and number three by the IBF. He's also the number one contender at the moment for the WBA crown, which is currently held by Mark Breland. The division, as I mentioned before, is somewhat thin, thus Blocker has not met a world-class opponent. And you begin to wonder, how good is Maurice Blocker? We will certainly find out tonight. Some interesting contrasts now in the tail of the tape. Hunnigan coming right in at the limit, 147, Blocker a quarter pound under. But look at the height differential. Two and a half inches in Blocker's favor and reach a substantial advantage, six and a half inches. Blocker with a good jab, a good straight right hand. Hunnigan doesn't particularly excel in any one fashion. He's just a very, very good Good overall fighter, good speed, good defense, puts combinations together well, and is 29-0 coming in. Here we go, scheduled for 12, scoring on the 10-point must system. The three judges at ringside doing the scoring. The non-scoring referee is Franz Marti of Switzerland. The judges are from Italy, Luxembourg, and Belgium. Blocker using that left jab. And that's the weapon that'll have to be effective with to be able to set up any chance of winning this fight and any chance of winning this fight for a blocker in the estimation of almost everyone you talk to would be either a late round stoppage or a decision. Hunnigan, on the other hand, could win it early if he's able to get inside and get through. He's that explosive. Hunnigan, born in Jamaica, moved to England when he was 10. And obviously the crowd favorite, though he's not as popular as other British boxers. Some consider him a little too arrogant, a little too brash. And I suppose his trunks, the sequined blue trunks, very much an extension of his personality. Blocker, more reserved and resolute, in the plain red. Hunnigan with a right hand following the left. Hunnigan trying to back him up. Blocker trying to keep him from getting inside. Maurice now starts to work underneath. Sticking that left jab. Keeping that left jab, or trying to anyway, in the face of Hunnigan, and following with the right, but not connecting. Hunnigan, with a combination blocker, able to ward it off. And trying to work underneath. Blocker, two and a half inches, the taller of the two. And again, that substantial reach advantage. Hunnigan missing with a right, but getting in with a left hand. In the waning moments of this first round at the Royal Albert Hall in London, and about scheduled for 12. Second round action now from London. Lloyd Hunnigan in the sequined trunks. Maurice Blocker out of Washington, D.C. in the red trunks. 
both fighters distracted a week ago it looked as if this fight was in severe jeopardy blocker in a contractual dispute with his former manager Don Elbaum and Hunnigan a press conference you may have read about as Hunnigan begins to work trying to get inside blocker Hunnigan made headlines here and a few in the United States by announcing this would be his last fight. He said that a week and a half ago. He said unless he could get a Sugar Ray Leonard or a Dwayne Thomas and fight for seven-figure purses, he was finished. And then he admitted a couple of days later he was being overly emotional. But he's brash and he's arrogant, and he's normally very, very aggressive. has been backing straight up and that is a bad move normally against the puncher Hunnigan doing a little head hunting in the first round and Blocker at this point unable to take advantage any real advantage of his height advantage the differential between the two two and a half inches trying to work inside now and blocker able to keep him away a minute to go in the second round one thing about Huntington he has shown great adaptability in recent fights he very early on sees exactly what the opponent is attempting to do and then is able to exploit it. Meanwhile, in Blocker's corner, Bob Miles, Freddie Brown yelling, box him, box him. He's a boxer puncher. And he's throwing more unnecessary punches than they figure he should be at this point in the fight. They want him to box, box. He's the cry from the corner. And here's Hunnigan with a combination, a good combination. Blocker coming back, Hunnigan covering up as the second round winds down. As we come to you live from London, Hunnigan and Blocker. Al Michaels back with you live from London. The Willoway Championship, the WBC and IBF versions at stake. Lloyd Hunnigan putting the pressure on here early in the third round. In the second defense of the crown, he rested from Donald Curry in September. Blocker through the first two rounds, unable to use his height advantage. His corner wants him to box more, not throw as many unnecessary punches, and he doesn't appear to be moving as much as he should. Both men unbeaten. Blocker has never been down in his career. He's never hit the canvas. Hunnigan, though unbeaten, has been dropped twice. Hunnigan missing with a wild left. the two separated by the referee Franz Marti who is refereeing his third world championship fight Rolando Baravecchio of Italy Arsenia Klopp of Luxembourg Robert Logist of Belgium are the three judges scoring at ringside again the 10 point must system three knockdown rule by the way is not in effect the standing eight count is not in effect though the mandatory eight is You'll notice after that left jab is delivered, he'll bring it back off times very low, and that would make it very ripe for Hunnigan's right-hand counter. 
And basically for that reason, we've given the first two rounds, at least on our card, to Hunnigan. Hunnigan now switching, fighting out of a southpaw stance. And trying to get the left inside. Working the body with the left hand. And now back orthodox. End of the third round. Fourth round action now from London, Lloyd Hunnigan, and we have him winning all three rounds thus far. Nothing spectacular, but functioning very smoothly, very workmanlike. And on his way, perhaps, to wearing down Maurice Blocker in this bout scheduled for 12. Bob Miles exhorting Blocker to step in with that jab to utilize the reach advantage. Again, the more aggressive, the pursuer thus far. Fighting in his home country. And trying to make it 30 and 0. Honeygan, for what it's worth, now saying, come on, come on to Blocker. He I was just ready to say he hasn't launched an all-out attack, and he has in many of his previous fights. On one hand, perhaps showing Blocker some respect. On the other, just a moment ago, you could see him say, come on, come on, let's mix it. picked off by Blocker. Blocker throwing those solitary jabs, not doubling up at all. Crowd, quiet final seconds of the fourth round in a fight to this point that belongs to Hunnigan. Round five here in London, nothing spectacular. Hunnigan just doing what he has to do. And Maurice Blocker using the jab, but not doubling, as we say, not moving as much as you might have suspected before the fight, and really doing no scoring. He says, keep your blows up. We'd like to alert our affiliates that at the end of this round, we will pause for a station break. Scheduled for 12 as we come to you live from London, where it's about 23 minutes after 
10 o'clock on a very spring-like Saturday night before a full house, about 5,000 at Royal Albert Hall. Lloyd Hunnigan in a sequined blue trunks defending his WBC and IBF Wallaway titles against Maurice Blocker of Washington, D.C. Hunnigan 29-0, Blocker 24-0. Hunnigan coming out of the crouch, leading with his head a bit, and that's something he has been prone to do from time to time in prior fights. Hunnigan switching back and forth between southpaw and orthodox. Under a minute now to go here in the fifth round. Nothing close to a knockdown thus far, but we have Hunnigan winning every round. Hunnigan doing all of the scoring. Good right hand by Lloyd. Blocker absorbing punch as well, but again, no factor really in the scoring. He has done nothing in an aggressive sense. and slipping but maintaining his balance as round five winds down Huntington much in command and will return to London after this word from your local station we're live again from the Royal Albert Hall in London. Sixth round action, Lloyd Hunnigan in the sequin blue trunks against Maurice Blocker. Hunnigan with a tremendous upset and an impressive victory over Donald Curry. And then he destroyed Johnny Bumpus, who a lot of people felt was shot at that point anyway. Even though he's ahead and we have him winning every round tonight, he has not been what you would call scintillating. He has not captured the fancy of, of the crowd, really. He's been more workmanlike than almost anybody would have been led to expect. And even though he's been the aggressor and the more dominant of the two, Blocker, in his corner between rounds, I noted, not breathing very heavily. And so Blocker still with a lot left. But whether he can manifest that or not remains to be seen. His performance surprising in the in the sense that we have come to expect him to to come out very aggressively in the early rounds to unleash a barrage and he has he has yet to do that here he said before the fight that he respected blocker and he has proven that to a certain extent though again he is dominating this fight in terms of a prediction the other day when I I asked him to make one. He felt that he was going to take Blocker out in the middle round. So here we are in number six, scheduled for 12. Huntington with a decent combination. And a good left hand off the side of Blocker's chin. can absorb a punch and as we mentioned he has never been to the canvas in 24 fights <laughs> coming upon the halfway mark if it goes the distance as we reach the end of the sixth round seventh round here in London Lloyd Hunnigan at this point at least on his way to defending his WBC and IBF World Wallaway Championships dominating this unspectacular fight as Blocker 
has dug himself a pretty good hole here. He's a man without extraordinary punching power. 24 and 0, 13 knockouts. We have him behind, severely behind at this point. Losing every round, in fact, on, on our card. And he's done nothing to exhibit the kind of punching power that could take Hunnigan out. with it. Lloyd missing with a, a wild left, fighting southpaw. Again, he's been switching. And a warning from referee Franz Marti. Again, Hunnigan prone to, to leading with his head from time to time. Are still just throwing one punch at a time, not doubling at all. Not doing anything to score. Hunnigan putting any and all of the combinations together thus far in the fight. Scheduled for 12. About 40 seconds remaining. In round seven. fight continues along its unspectacular path dominated by Lloyd Hunnigan as we come upon the end of round seven eighth round now and the rounds have been fairly repetitious to this point Lloyd Hunnigan who fought the entire seventh round southpaw has been switching back and forth through the fight and here in round eight very much in control of Maurice Blocker, who's been unable to put together any combination of substance. And anything that would impress the judges to this point. He has proven to be a somewhat more difficult opponent, I suppose, is what you could say about it for Hunnigan, but still, I guess that's uh, damning with faint praise. Hunnigan clearly in control. And again, this fight may leave us with that lingering question, just how good is Lloyd Hunnigan? He was great against Curry. Bumpus, well, that fight was over in a hurry. And what about this one? He's been dominant. On his way to at this point. But how good will still be the question. And of course, looming perhaps down the line would be Mark Freeland. Left hand below the belt and the warning from referee Franz Marty. Hunnigan holding the WBC and IBF crowns and Freeland is the WBA title holder, a title relinquished by Hunnigan after he won all three against Donald Curry.
slight mouse forming under the right eye of Lloyd Hunnigan. seconds now round eight and round eight turns out to be another rerun going back to London ninth round now Lloyd Hunnigan in the sequin trunks and Maurice Blocker and referee Franz Marty wants Blocker to be toweled off before resuming round nine too much moisture on his face and so after that brief stoppage, round nine resumes. Mentioned Mark Breland, and again, when you think about Breland, you're talking about a tall, angular fighter. Similar in physical stature to Maurice Blocker, but the Breland is a man, if you've seen him fight, who has much more in his arsenal than Blocker appears to possess, at least tonight. It could be that, as another warning is, is issued from Marty, that Hunnigan would have trouble penetrating the defense to, to some extent, and then have to deal with the offensive prowess of, of a Mark Breland. But that's if and when. Blocker, the kind of fighter, and you can see it if you watch men of his ilk perform in the past, it's very often difficult to look real good against him. Even though Hunnigan is dominating the fight, he has not been anything along the lines of remotely spectacular, and he's been more functional than anything. Blocker to this point, and where the ninth round has, has yet to really get it together to the extent that he has to go out and, and tries to take the title with, with a flurry, with some combinations, with whatever it's going to take, because he's a smart enough man to know right now that he has next to no chance on point. Final minute in round nine. A reminder, tomorrow, Mike McCallum will be defending his WBA Junior Middleweight Championship against former Goldaway champ Milton McClory. Meldrick Taylor against Primo Ramos in a super lightweight fight. That's tomorrow, 4 Eastern, 3 Central and Pacific here on ABC. Hunnigan coming on now here in round nine. And the crowd exhorting him. Under a half minute to go in the ninth round. Hunnigan still very much dominant at the end of the ninth round. Tenth round action now. Scheduled for 12 for the IBF and WBC well away titles at the Royal Albert Hall in London. Lloyd Hunnigan, born in Jamaica, grew up living in England. And the local favorite here tonight, obviously, very much in command against Maurice, the thin man blocker out of Washington, D.C., who has come in unbeaten but who has been thoroughly beaten thus far by Hunnigan. If you missed it earlier, the Wood Memorial, one of the last big preps for the Kentucky Derby, won by Gulch. And favorite Capote was fourth. And in other news today, if you've not heard, Mike Schmidt of the Phillies hit home run number 500. London. It continues on for Lloyd Hunnigan in a bout that has featured similar rounds, repetitive rounds. And 
Huntington very much on his way to a victory. Unless Jojo Guerra shows up. get wearing down a little bit here in the 10th round. And the pace of the fight, which had been slowing, continues to wind down here in the 10th. just doesn't have what it's going to take to win it at this point. Lacking that punching power. And obviously very much in need of a knockout as Hunnigan delivers a decent combination. Blocker tries to counter. And we're in the final seconds of the 10th round from London. We'll be back. But well, unless something unbelievable takes place, Lloyd Hunnigan is just a couple of rounds away from retaining quite easily and obviously unanimously his IBF and WBC Wellaway titles. As we are on the 11th round, scheduled for 12 here in London. And again, again, running up against the type of opponent who makes it sometimes difficult for a fighter to look good and certainly difficult for a fighter like Hunnigan, who can look spectacular, to look that way. Locker with some body blows here. And again now on the verge of running out of gas here in the 11th round. Hunnigan pretty tired himself at this point. Even though both came into this fight in great shape. Whatever he has left, but it's not much at, at this point. And a good left hand from Hunnigan. That rocked him. Hunnigan tries to follow, but it's Blocker who does the counter punching on the inside. And now back comes Lloyd again. As the action finally gets hot here in the 11th round. With another left to the side of his head. About 15 seconds to go in the 11th round. So Huntington providing a little bit of spirited action anyway here in the 11th. And the crowd salutes him to a certain extent. I mentioned before, and it's worth talking at some length about the fact that the Brits love their fighters, but they love them to be, I suppose, in a way, good losers and gracious gentlemen. And Hunnigan runs counter to that. He is brash and he is arrogant. 
and he is a man who has never been married but is proud to tell you that he has four children by three different women and it's not that we're telling you anything out of school it's just part of his lifestyle it's gotten a lot of publicity here another look at the left hand that made solid contact with Maurice Blocker here in the 11th round but he is earning and gaining more and more respect and down the line, he is obviously hopeful, as he said in a press conference a week and a half ago, of the big, big payday. Maybe Breland next, who knows? And he's hopeful that somewhere down the line is maybe a Sugar Ray Leonard. Twelfth and final round. with a leaping, lunging right hand. And Blocker trying to, to muster it up, trying to throw whatever he's got left here in a last gasp attempt, and he'll have a point deducted for his overzealousness for a low blow. So on top of all that, a point taken away from Blocker, who has been, well, you can make a case for him being shut out. He looked pretty good in, in round nine. There's a possibility that they may have given him that round. And outside of that, forget it. Blocker wants Huntington to come on now, but it's far too late. And the crowd begins a little mini celebration, at least vocally, as this 12th round begins to wind down. throwing whatever he's got left. But Hunnigan just pouring in on him. And a good combination by Hunnigan again. So spirited combinations in the 11th and 12th. But he didn't need them. against Trunk starting to come down. I suppose it's an opportune time for that, though the fight is almost over. Blocker trying to do whatever damage he can do. Spirited and game is Maurice, who's also absorbing some punishment here as the 12th round ends with some of the best action of the fight. game effort for Blocker and Hunnigan exhausted as well goes 12 as it goes the distance and there'll be little doubt about the outcome of this one he's a tired champion we'll be back and the officials will make it official when we return all right Jim and the ring announcer now to make it official Bernard Sullivan with the decision Lloyd Hunnigan dominating. And we are awaiting what will be, I'm sure, a unanimous decision. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. The winner and still second successful defense of his WBC and IBF world welterweight crown. May we have a hand for the 
So Huntington is the winner here in London, England on this Saturday night. And now back to Saturday afternoon in the Eastern Time Zone at Al Troutwig. Title holder. W.